Hey guys, in this video we're going to go over Faraday's Law and Lenz's Law. It's such a really lovely concept, okay, and it's one that just people find a little bit hard to get their heads around, but they just repeat the same questions all the time and it's always the same answers. You just have to make sure you always relate it to the equation. And the equation says here that it says EMF. The amount of people who write voltage, that's wrong, right? It says EMF in the question, so you need to write EMF in your answer. What it says is the EMF, or the electromotive force, the EMF in just Okay? Those two words have to be there. And if you did triple physics for GCSEs, you've already done that. Okay? You have to say EMF and just. The EMF just is directly proportional to something divided by time. Two is the rate of change. Okay, and we can see that triangle represents change. The rate of change of and n times that symbol represents the magnetic flux linkage. Okay, again, it could be quite nice here because they tell you that n times phi or n times the symbol represents magnetic flux linkage. And they tell you that the symbol by itself is B times A and that just represents magnetic flux. They don't tell you that in OCRA. In OCRA, they just give you the BA cosine beta. But you need to know that's this B times A. B is your magnetic field strength or your magnetic flux density, okay? So that's B, always measure in Teslas, times A is our cross-sectional area. So let's say I've got a coil of wire. What we're looking at is the cross-sectional area of that wire. So we know the area of a circle is going to be pi r squared. And again, B is our magnetic flux density or magnetic field strength is going to be measured in Teslas. So magnetic flux is equal to our B times A, and our magnetic flux linkage is when you multiply it through by the number of coils there are. So let's say there's like 100 coils. The reason we use cosine theta is because it's always a maximum, so again, the magnetic flux linkage is always a maximum when theta equals zero. Okay, so what does that mean? What it means is, let's say we have our magnetic field lines all going in this direction, and there's my, I don't know, my coil of wire. Our normal, remember, is always perpendicular to the surface, so there's my normal, and then the angle between the normal and the magnetic field lines is represented by our angle theta. So if we want it to be a maximum, we want the normal to be parallel to the field lines. So that's why it's cosine theta, because to go through the angle, remember, is always cosine. So to make it a maximum is we want to rotate it through by theta. So remember, it's always a maximum, we did that in the previous video, it's always a maximum when the normal is parallel to the field lines. Okay, or another way to say that in our earlier video, we said it's when the plane is perpendicular to field lines. But that's why we use feet up, because we're doing the angle between the normal and our field lines. So what we do is we assume it's a maximum if they are perpendicular to each other. So it's a maximum if our coil is perpendicular to our magnetic field lines. Okay, so what's going to happen here? So let's say we look at this example here where I've got my permanent magnet. We know permanent magnets are only made of steel. Permanent magnets have their own magnetic field lines, right? We know that in a magnet, we know that the way I remember it anyway, is Santa Claus lives in the North Pole. He has to come out of the North Pole to deliver his presents. He has to come out of the North Pole and around the world to deliver his presents. Again, out of the North Pole and around the world to deliver his presents. So clearly it always goes into that South Pole. So magnetic field lines always come out of the North Pole because Santa Claus has come out of the North Pole to live his presence and then they always go into that South Pole. So let's say we've got a permanent magnet, our permanent magnet with our, its own magnetic field lines and what we're doing is we're pushing it into a coil of wire. Okay, it's just a coil of wire. There's nothing there, right? It's just wire wrapped in a coil. It's not connected to any batteries or nothing. The only thing I've connected to here might be my ammeter. So what I can see is when I start to push this magnet into my coil of wire, what's happening, there isn't any field lines passing through the wire. So what's going to happen initially is my current is going to be zero. And then as I start to push this magnet into my coil of wire, you can see that I'm changing the number of magnetic field lines passing through my coil. So as we try to push this magnet in, so let's say we look at later in time, there's my north, there's my south, and here is my coil of wire because what I've done is I've pushed it inside the coil of wire. Now you can see I have magnetic field lines crossing through or cutting that wire. And any time, what we're saying is, any time we have those magnetic field lines crossing through that area of our wire, we're going to get a magnetic flux, right? So what we're getting is we're getting a magnetic flux 
passing through that coil of wire. And anytime we have a change, remember it went from zero to have any magnetic field lines cut in it, because we get a change in the number of field lines passing through it, we're going to get an EMF in just this wire. So because then it's a complete circuit, we're going to get an EMF in just, right? We're going to get a potential difference in just in our wires. And because it is a complete circuit, that's why then we're going to get a current moving through our coil of wire. So another way you can see that Faraday's law here, so this is what Faraday's law is. Faraday's law is that the EMF in just is directly proportional to the rate of change of magnetic flux linkage. So for example, if I was to move this magnet in much faster, that's a quicker change of magnetic flux linkage, I'm going to get a higher EMF in just, right? If we use a stronger magnet, so we've got maybe more magnetic field lines, we get more magnetic field lines passing through in a time, and we get more EMF in just. Okay, so as long as we have this magnet moving, as long as we always have a change, we're always going to get an EMF in just. If the magnet stops moving, there are going to be no change, right? Nothing's changing over time. So if our magnet stops moving because there's no change, there's going to be no EMF in just. So what we need to have is we always need to have the magnet moving into the coil of wire, or you can have the magnet fixed and the coil of wire moving. As long as what's happening is we're getting a change in these magnetic field lines cutting our wire. Okay, the next thing you need to know is how does Lenz's law relate to it? So Lenz's law basically just puts a negative symbol in front of Faraday's law. So Lenz's law just puts like a little negative in the front there. So what Lenz's law is telling us is that the EMF in just is the opposite to that rate of change of magnetic flux linkage. So what's saying is, if I'm trying to push a north pole into this coil of wire, the EMF in just is going to oppose that change. So again, what Lenz's law says is that the EMF in just opposes the change that caused it. Okay, so what that means is it's going to oppose the change that caused it. So if I'm trying to push a North Pole in, it wants to oppose, it wants to go against the change. So to oppose a North Pole coming in, to oppose the North Pole, we're going to get a North Pole generated on this side. Because what's going to happen, it wants to repel that North Pole. Because we know like poles repel, so now what's going to happen is this North Pole here is going to try to repel this North Pole here. So because we then have to do work done to push those new North Poles together, that's why we get the EMF in just, right? Because energy can't be created from, from nowhere, it has to come from somewhere. So it comes from the action of us trying to push that North Pole in against another North Pole. Okay, so let's look at our question. So our question says that a coil has got 120 turns. So again, we know our number turns n is going to be 120. We've got a radius of 4 centimeters, or 4 times 10 to the negative 2 meters. We have our magnetic field strength, our magnetic flux density of 20 milliteslas, 20 times 10 to the negative 3 teslas. And what we're doing is we're taking out in a time of 0 0.02 seconds. So what we're saying here is that we did have our coil all inside a magnetic field, and we took the coil out. So I know what was the EMF in just so we know the EMF just is equal to the rate of change of our magnetic flux linkage. linkage sorry. So our number of turns is 120. Our rate of change of magnetic flux, remember magnetic flux is equal to B times A cosine theta. But we're going to assume that it was perpendicular. We're going to assume it was a maximum because it didn't tell us anything about angles. So we're going to assume that it is a maximum. So we're just going to use B times A. So multiplied by B, which is 20 times 10 to the negative 3, multiplied by the area. Okay, so again, it tells a coil. A coil is going to have an area, we said, of a circle of pi r squared. So that's why the area that we're going to use is pi times our radius, which is 4 times 10 to the negative 2, all squared, divided by the time that it took to completely remove it, which is 0 0.02 seconds. So on our calculators, what we're doing is we're doing our pi r squared, so 4 times 10 to the negative 2 squared. Multiplied by pi, we're going to multiply by 20 times 10 to the negative 3, which was our magnetic field strength or magnetic flux density. And we're going to multiply by 120, which is our number of turns of wire. And we divide by 0 0.02, which is our time to get our rate of change of our magnetic flux linkage, which comes out then at 0 0.6.
volts. Because remember, EMF is measured in volts. So, go ahead.